Yeah, you just got to transition, and uh, you know, and you got to you know challenge your your team and your leaders uh, to transition into goals, and uh, you know that's that's part of it. How about Jamel Dean? Do you expect him to be ready? Yeah, we we expect uh, Dean to be back. Um, you know, obviously without having him uh, against that high p- powered of offense, I thought it was an excellent effort. And uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get Jamel back, and uh, and that'll be a, a big plus. Can you talk about Deshaun? I was noticing Saturday he was out there. He was pointing to where plays were going to go before they happened. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he's like a coach on the field. Uh, he's got great instincts. Uh, he understands tendencies, understands alignments and situations, and um, you know he he does that quite a bit. And uh, you know that's a and he's a leader too. I mean, he just he's got a great nose for the football, and uh, he's playing at such a high level right now, and uh, really setting the tone, you know, for our defense. Can you talk about his toughness too? After the game, when you talk to him, he wasn't moving real swiftly. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, this many games in a row and as many tackles and as many plays as he's in on. And, you know, he was in, um, you know, on the, uh, when they went on side kick, our hands team. And, you know, uh, he just said, you know, he wanted, wanted to do whatever he, you know, could do to, to win the game and, and, and did a real solid job with that. But uh, Deshaun's one of our leaders and uh, just does a super job. We, we talked about it a little bit. Sorry, but Marlon Block had a field goal in three straight games. Yeah. What, what, what makes him? Yeah, game? you know, that's a special deal. I don't know if I've ever heard of that, you know. And um, that was one of the impact plays in the game. They drove down the field, and and uh, we blocked the field goal. We got some momentum. I think we scored, and, you know, it was they, they were behind from that point. And so huge play in the game. Uh, he's a force. Um, you know, that's, that's really something. How much recruiting do you get to do or send your staff out to do during this, this bye week? And, and do you feel like you have to do almost like more babysitting during a time where there's a tough stretch, you know, right before it? You, you know, we, we will. Uh, this week will be uh, – a lot of it will be about recruiting, you know, a chance to, to, to do that and get out on the road. And we had some guys out yesterday. We'll have guys out Thursday and Friday and Saturday. So it uh, gives you a chance to, you know, really put a little extra energy in that. And uh, – our staff's doing a super job. Uh, this is going to be a very good class. Uh, we're excited about these guys. There was one player, I know you can't talk directly, but he said that he won't consider signing on the early signing day. When a player says something like that, do you consider them like still committed, or, or what's your kind of feeling? Yeah, I mean, every situation is different. We had some last year that chose to, to sign afterwards. Each individual is different. And um, so, you know, just whatever whatever's best for them. Guys here, I mean, Eight games in, could, could you ever imagine? I, I know you haven't since you've been at Auburn. I mean, Whitlow's a redshirt freshman, yeah. Seth, Schwartz, Shivers, mm-hmm. so many freshmen making an impact on, on an Yeah, offense. yeah, this is, um, this is the most freshmen we've had making an impact since I've been here. And, um, you know, I, the, the group, and there's some defensive guys too that are playing at a high level. They're not just playing, they're starting to make, you know, plays on a consistent basis. And, you know, that's, um, that's real encouraging. And a lot of them aren't playing like freshmen anymore. So, but we do have a bunch of them out there. When you have a midseason scrimmage like that for younger guys, what type of things are you looking for? Well, really, uh, a chance to evaluate where they're at. The guys that have improved. Um, you know, most of these guys have been on the scout team and everything that goes with it. And so, we get a chance to see the ones who have improved. Give a chance to, you know, develop. I mean, that's a big part of the development of of the players. And get get some you know one on one coaching time with their position coaches. So um, I really think it's all of the above. Who caught your eye today in the scrimmage? I mean, it's, it's you know we probably went thirty plays. I mean, I don't know if there was one thing or one one person. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> it's hard. You're kind of excited watching them all, really, to be honest with you. With guys as productive as Seth, Anthony, and Sean have been, do you, do you take this bye week and say they were going to make more of an effort to get those guys more touches in the last four games? You, you know, I, I think what it does right now, it gives our, our coaches in all three phases a chance to get the best plan moving forward. You know, whoever touches the ball, who plays. Um, you know, we just talked about those guys are getting better. I mean, as a, a collective group, and you know, um, that's real encouraging. What do you learn about yourself? You know, when you have your own expectations for a season to where you are now, eight games in, you got a chance to. Report. Yeah, I mean, you just, um, I think any time you, you start out and you got to reassess your goals, I mean, that's, that's part of transition. And, 
you know, I think our team has, has done a, a good job with that. I think our team's in a really good spot, um, you know, moving forward with these last four games. And like I said, I'm really glad that the off week is is here right now. It's a perfect time for us. And, uh, and like I said, I think we're in a good spot. What, what are your plans for the rest of the season for Ace and Uh Ace is going to compete uh, with other running backs just like, uh, you know, the other ones are. And uh, he was out there today. I think he had a very solid practice. When Whitlow emerged the way he did, I mean, that first game you could see it, and now where he's at today, we know he was in that starting – job, you know, rotation, but what was the push for you to finally put him over Cam and the others? You talking about Whitlow? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's he's produced when he's been out there. Um, there's no doubt. And But, you know, we're excited about the other guys, too. I mean, it was running back by committee, you know, somewhat uh, last game. We have a lot of guys uh, doing a lot of different things, and um, you can't have enough depth at the running back position. How's Cam? Yeah, I mean, Cam is uh, is really one of our leaders. Uh, he sets a tone for, you know, a lot of guys on offense, and he's a team guy, and, you know, he's ready called upon whenever his number's called. How much do you focus on those backup quarterbacks this week and Willis and Sandler and stuff? Yeah, you yeah, we uh, they got quite a few reps today, um, you know, in the regular part of practice and, and um, you know, two of them during the scrimmage part. Yeah, I guess after this game, you'll, you'll have it the most four days. Yeah. Well, at that point, you you start trying to get some of those guys who are going to be redshirted uh, ready to play some snaps if if the opportunity. You you know that is a possibility, and like I said, I think that's why this week is um, is really you know strategic, and that is a possibility. I'm not sitting here saying that some people will or or won't or anything, but um, you know I think it gives you a chance from a, a coach's standpoint to evaluate everything. Which two quarterbacks well, took part of the scrimmage? Uh, Joey uh, and Cord were the two that, that got the reps during the scrimmage. What led to uh, Joey tra- uh, transferring, <laughs> traveling uh, for the first time? You, you know, Joey, first of all, was, um, you know, he started off fall camp, was in a good spot, and he ended up hurting his thumb, and that kind of put him back. And he got cleared a couple weeks ago and really has done a good job you know, up until this point. And so that was really, you know, part of it that he's able to practice and he's been doing a good job in practice. You said you guys are going to start maybe doing a little bit of preparation for Texas A&M. I know it's super early, but I'm sure you've gotten at least a little bit of a look at them. What, what stands out about them early? Well, I mean, I, I think they're a talented uh, team. Uh, there's no doubt they got a lot of guys back from last year's team. And, uh, you know, the, the, the bit I've seen, they play hard. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you all.